I guess up. <laughs> Boy, I ain't seen some of y'all in a little minute. <laughs> What's up, everybody? Yeah. Good morning, good morning, good morning. <laughs> good morning, good morning. Some music to get everything started. Oh, yeah. All right. <laughs> Good right, to see friend. us. Yo. There he is. I was like, I'm waiting for a pulley. Okay. Cool, man. Boy, it's good to see us. Thank you all uh, for not getting hangovers and stuff. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> or we could just be playing it off pretty well. That's <laughs> yeah. Some of y'all might, might be experts. <laughs> <laughs> not, not me. That's a good one. Hey, I hear y'all right on. <laughs> um, okay. Why, yes. Okay. One more. I think this may be everybody. That's Mary. Oh, uh, it's it's some more. It's 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 we'll see. I see. Uh, I feel like you sent out like a, a text hey. class or something. So right, we good. Yeah, mom. Yeah, mom. Hey, obviously, what's happening? Hey, everybody, how y'all doing? Good morning. Hey, what's up? What's up, Dana man? What's up? Doing good. <laughs> wow, Lois. <laughs> oh, East Coast. Hey, yeah. hey, no, what country are you in? <laughs> what, we, what's I'm up, uh, Delaware. Lois? What country you in? Oh. oh no, I'm in Delaware. I'm on the East Coast. <laughs> <Lois! Okay. laughs> right on. <laughs> yes, uh, respect. Holy, can you hear us? Yes, I can. Now. Okay. Good morning. Everybody Good morning. Good. What's up, Tim? Doing? What's up, Tim? Hey, Good. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Let me see where Glenn is. Yeah, like here. Marlon is out there. Larry Clark, my brother, my brother. Hey, hey, what's up, Bobby? Too. What's up, Kiara? What's up, Bully? What's up, Lois? Hey, hey, Lois. Hey, hey, Lois, out of town. Jay Gill in the house. Jay Gill in the house. What's Glad up? to meet you. Glad to meet you, Tim. Glad to meet you, Maria. Glad to meet everybody. Hot Sefi's in the house. Woo. I just saw her Sefi. Yeah, <laughs> look at that. Look at us knowing everybody. <laughs> My press is out there. Yeah. Hey, Ooh. okay, you got a full house. Yes, we do. Hey, no. hey, hey, what's happening? <laughs> All right, what's up? Hey. Um. Well, to just be uh, respectful of everyone's time, we can just get started, and then when people come in, I'll just bring them in. If everyone could just go around and just say your name, we'll just start there because there's a lot of people and there's a lot of things that we have to get through. So Murphy, you can go first, I guess. I'm Baba too. Charles, Murphy, glad, to, glad to see us. Uh, really respect everybody. Appreciate y'all for supporting what we're trying to do. That's what I'm just going to... Yeah, I'm keeping short. This there you go. Lois yeah, Ingram. Just raise your hand. There you go. Just <laughs> Lois Ingram. Hello, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Thomas here, Clark. Yeah, are you joining? Uh, yeah, Papa. Hey, to everybody. To okay. I'm Steffi Kushma. Tim I'm Albert. Daniel Christian. The new kid. <laughs> uh, Michael Francis. Doing? I'm, uh, I'm Marlon Whitfield. Larry Clark with the North St. Louis Arts Council in St. Louis. Holy. Yeah. Pulley, can you hear us? Yes. Uh, good morning, Kevin, Kevin Pulley. Good morning. How's everybody doing? All right. Um, good morning. Quintanta. I said my name, but Quintanta, former student Roosevelt. Graduate, you know. Yay! <laughs> I have uh, J G. Oh, J Gill. I thought Bob, you always say hello. He hello, everybody. My name is J Gill. Nice to be with you all. Um, Good morning, Jay. Let's see, morning. everybody. And I'm Key, or you can call my real name is Kiaris, but everyone calls me Key. Um, 
and I'm gonna unmute Murphy because it looks like he's talking. I muted you, Murphy. I don't know. Unmute yourself. Oh, okay. There you go. All right. I'm trying to let an, another gentleman in. Somehow he didn't get the link, so give okay. me a moment. All right. Okay. Well, welcome, and I need, and I kind of need you to um, just go over what this group is about and what our goals are, Murphy. Okay. All right. Um, I'm gonna let me try to send this link out to this brother right quick. Hold on, y'all. I don't know how he didn't get it. So let me see. One moment. Hold on. Or um, actually, I can have you can figure that out, Murphy and Pulley. Do you mind just talking about the group and kind of um, just the goals that we have with this group? Oh, uh, uh, sure, sure. All right. Well, first of all, again, good morning, Happy New Year to everybody, um, and really appreciate you all taking times uh, from your family, your schedules on a, on the holiday. Um, uh, like I said, I'm Kevin Pulley. Um, I've had the opportunity to work with Charles uh, with our media departments uh, for the last uh, 14 years. I'm at Carnahan High School and, and I've been there for the last four, well, 15 years, 14 in, with media. And, and um, you know, we, we uh, teach the kids in all the various areas of media from the video to the audio, to the photography, to the graphics side. And, uh, you know, looking at all these faces, this is, this is really what it's all about. But we hope to, um, you know, get across to our students. One of the things I tell my students is it doesn't really matter about all the material that you learn. It's really about relationships. And I wish all of mine could see what we have right here today. But again, uh, I, I, uh, I know as Charles is trying to get set up with uh, uh, another participant, uh, um, we just want to say thank you uh, in the area of media and, and what better way to do it than to have uh, professionals like yourselves. And because and, it's one thing, as you all know, many of you all teach, uh, we can tell them X, Y, Z, but when they hear it from someone else like you all who are doing it, it, it has a tremendous impact. So again, I don't want to take up too much more time that other than to say, uh, welcome to y'all. Thank you. And uh, we're looking forward to, to work with you all to, to help uh, some future uh, media professionals. Yeah, and uh, I just want to say, uh, make, uh, Kiaris, make sure you're recording and uh, right on. Um, so, oh, shoot. <laughs> yeah, right. I had to do the same thing. I was like, let me just put this away. <laughs> yeah, I already been through mad, y'all. <laughs> so, <laughs> so um, but I want to go on it. Can I share my screen? Let yes. me try that. All right. Uh, maybe. I don't know if I set that up for you. You got to do that. Yeah. No, nope, I got you. I'll just make you. All right. Let me see. I'm okay. Still disabled. There you go. All right. Let's see what happens. There we go. So uh, let me do it this way. All right. Uh, yeah, let's go see what happens. All right. So basically, um, I'm going to show you two documents. Uh, this was a, a meeting we had of career and technical education. And the part that I really want, want you all to check out is right here, number two. It says, I expectations documentation. Um, the basic thing is, um, I'll show you what that's. Uh, what that means and what that looks like, the document that goes with that. And the other thing is this thing called CTSOs, uh, Career and Technical Student Organizations. So we had to join one called uh, Skills USA. So it's a way to interact with people beyond the local level and uh, even some, some lightweight competition and so forth. But the whole point is to just stay in touch with uh, people and students and uh, professionals around the country, around the world with these organizations. So this other one I wanna show, hold on once, oh, I got that, uh, cool. 
So Glenn's getting in. So I'm gonna show you this other one. If I can figure this out. All right. And then this one is basically um, about the career and technical education program. So basically what it's saying is the programs are important components of strong high schools that believe in giving our students options on graduation. In other words, where can they really go and make a living, make a career, if that's what they want to do? And who can they get in touch with? So the advisory committee's goal is to evaluate and improve CTE programs by helping to ensure high quality education is delivered to each student within the CTE classroom and assist schools develop effective and such programs, as well as provide a vital link between the technical classroom and the people and the institutions that apply the technical information. So that's the basics of it. Um, and that's why we have contacted y'all <laughs> and everybody that's here right now. Uh, I can stop sharing at this point. So basically uh, that's why all of you are here because uh, we know each other and it's always good to expand our, our, our sphere and circle of the people that we know are professionals in this business and who, are, who care about uh, all our young people and making sure that they can do uh, and participate in this. Like when Santa said, um, and Kiaris can tell you, you know, they've been through the program. There's more folks out there and the things that we do. Um, you know, I'm proud. You know, I can tease uh, Quinsanta about working with Jay Gill. I can tease Jay Gill about working with Quinsanta. They they working over at Channel 2. That's a professional situation. You know what I'm saying? And then there's a lot of people that, you know, I didn't really know that well before this year. Like Michael Francis, you know what I'm saying? And, and, and Marlon. Uh, Whitfield with the uh, Whitfield Foundation, and uh, now and uh, Tim Albert. I've been knowing him as long as well. I can't even say that they, they don't have a word that long. And, and uh, uh, it's just a lot of people. And Glenn Wolk is in here somewhere. He'll get his picture together, you know. So we know people, you know. Now um, I want to say I'm proud to know the young ladies. Now I can call everybody in here young, all right? <laughs> <laughs> so, so, you know, Thomasina's out there, come on y'all. And uh, where I said we go? And Lois, uh, uh, Ingram, and I invited uh, Lois Conley too. So she's in the loop. You understand what I'm saying? So um, we got young, old, men, women, black, white, we got, we got the spectrum, all right? So, the point is, we just need to get to know each other. Right. So you could ask us, hey, what y'all trying to do? And then we'll say, this is what we're trying to do. We want to pro provide internship experiences for these youngsters. And we want to put them in touch with professionals in these fields. And there are people in St. Louis who can help us with that. And a whole bunch of them is right here in this meeting. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, just to piggyback a little bit off of Murphy, um, we have a non-for-profit that we run through the St. Louis Public Schools where um, we can go and do uh, hands-on training. And then just if, if someone wanted to go to the Sheldon, for example, um, and do some intern training or whatever, we have the capability to get funding to pay them because that's, that's really what it comes down to, honestly, because there are some students that are out there who want to be in this field, who love doing anything media related, but there's the, I don't have a way, or like, I need money to cover these things. So we wanna just provide the way, uh, any, any avenue that we can, and to bring leaders and people like us together to give them opportunities um, to just dive into their field and be hands-on. Um, so with that being said, I don't know if Murphy already assigned some committee members or if we're going to discuss that now. Um, and, with, and with that, we'll break it down probably at another meeting or I send out an email to just tell you 
like what your role entails and what you will be responsible for. Um, right now we're looking at the school year of 2021. To 2020, 2020. Well, actually the second half of the 2020-2021 school year. Because okay. uh, we're ready, we ready to do some stuff right now. Yeah. Yeah. So, so before the fall, we want to have everything in place. I think the deadline was like May or something. Yeah, that's what yeah, they're saying. So we want to as soon as possible. So I don't even want to say like May. I want to say February or March. Like it, the sooner the better to get to get everything that we need to get together in order so that we can submit our proposal and then everyone kind of knows where we stand. Can I say something real quick? Yes, yeah. yes. Okay, so Baba Two, he hit me up. He uh he reached out to me. You know, Baba Two calls is like the bat signal you come running. Um, so <laughs> yeah, we all know. Prim <laughs> so primarily, I was trying to just get up to speed of actually what's going on and what he may need or whatever. So would you kind of, I guess, can go in a little bit more details as exactly, I guess, what are you all kind of looking for? I know you said what the need is, and I think uh, a lot of us on here, we, we have that same purpose of helping the youth, helping to strengthen our production um, community here in town. But I guess just dive into a little bit more exactly specifically what you all may be looking for as far as positionings and people for the committees and things of that nature. Well, I would say the, uh, I, can, I can speak to the examples that we already have as far as internship sites. Uh -huh. Okay, um, Sheldon Concert Hall is one at this time. Uh, we, st we still have to formalize the uh, memorandum of understanding. All right, um, we're working on a relationship with the World Chess Hall of Fame and uh -huh. similar thing there. Um, we want, okay, let me keep going. Um, we actually have one, we still have one with the National Blues Museum. All right, um, we're working on uh, a relationship with uh, continuity, which uh, Michael Francis represents. And they realize that they're more in a position to be part of this advisory committee and in an advisory capacity. Um, all, of, all of you out there uh, are in these fields. And if it's a matter of, the question is how can uh, a student work with you or how can you come in to a, 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 an environment and work with a student or work with students? So what we've learned that we can be anywhere we need to be virtually and interaction of the, and connect, connectivity of the internet now. Um, um, for instance, I, I've been at the Sheldon I set up my uh, 360 camera. I, I broadcast that, and also we we uh, we connect the ATM, you know, the, the switcher, and put that on on a laptop and control it remotely. So the point is, we can go anywhere. Um, the pandemic is going to stop us, slow us down a little bit, because. We can't physically be in those places, but as soon as we can, we want to. You know what I'm saying? So, um, so that's number. I would say that's the framework to establish these relationships, to get these memoranda of understanding of how we can help. And it, like I say, um, it can, it's actually can be formalized. I've sent some out, some of the copies. I make sure everybody gets a copy here, and. Uh, that's number one, I would say. That type of interaction, an actual space, place, a relationship where uh, a young people can work. Yeah. And if you got oh, questions, yeah. just jump on in here uh, if, if I'm not uh, hitting the point. <laughs> so one of um, my main jobs is, um, like I mentioned, I do have a non-for-profit. It's called Alumni Broadcasting Association through the St. Louis Public School. So I actually, before COVID, uh, would go into the schools and bring people that I knew in the media industry that are around my age. Um, I'm 27, by the way, uh, around my age who've been through the media program through the St. Louis Public Schools will go into the schools and like, hey, we've been through this program. This is what we're doing now. So I've been doing this for about 10 years in the media field. 
uh, Quinsanta, probably the same. Um, he's still in the media field. I have, I know someone who works for PlayStation now who's been through the me police media department. Um, so going and being active inside of the classroom was our main focus. I think we started ABA two years ago or something like that. Yeah. And now that things are virtual, that, that isn't gonna stop us. Like I just joined, I think Pulley's class like a few weeks ago to just talk to students and let them know like, we're still here, we're still working on getting you these internships or putting you in the positions where you need to be to, uh, pursue, your, to pursue your passion in your field. Like we don't want you to feel like, I, I don't know anyone so I can't do this outside of school. I have to go get a job, um, an industry job, or like go and work at a fast food restaurant or something like that. No, let me put you in this position with these connections that we know, and you can go and be in your field and we can make sure that you're being paid to do the things um, that you want to do. We don't want them to be, I guess, kind of, I don't want to say, narrow-minded, I guess, because I didn't think that I would be going to college, let alone going to college on close to a full ride scholarship to film football. That is not heard of, definitely in the St. Louis public schools, that's not heard of someone getting a scholarship to do something like that. And I was the first of Carnahan's graduating class to do that. So there is a way um, and we just want to kind of be in their face about it to give them this space and opportunity to make these connections. Um, Pulley? Yes. Oh, I was, I was going to okay. say, uh, uh, just kind of responding uh, uh, to what Dana uh, had asked before about what, what are we asking for. I, I think you, you and Babatu summed it up so well. Um, just recently, uh, right before the end of the semester, uh, I had the opportunity, uh, Lois Ingram and Larry Clark um, with the Art Media Co-op, co uh, uh, Lois basically took us on a virtual tour of her studio. And again, we can take advantage of this virtual situation that we're in because obviously the kids are so visual. They were just so excited about, I mean, she took us, she has this wonderful uh, multimedia uh, photography, media, audio studio. She took them on a tour, got them excited, and then invited them to come participate and be part of a program that she's starting in the new year, her and Larry. So uh, along with uh, her business partner. And so I guess what I'm saying is just this visual world that we in had a tremendous impact. So any opportunities, while we're limited, it's also a, an opportunity for any of y'all that you know have the ability and time to do it it had a tremendous impact. And I know right immediately after meeting with Lois, one of the young ladies who had a, has a number of challenges, she found a way to get to her studio. Um, I think even catching an Uber out there, this particular young lady takes care of her mom who, who is uh, vision impaired, she's blind. She got there and is now gonna be part of, of, of Lois's uh, uh, and Ed's and Larry's, uh, their, their, their uh, photo program. So. I just want to say that we're, these, this visual setting room provides many opportunities like that. Uh, can I chime in? That's yes, a good please. segue for me, uh, Pulley and Barbara too. So I represent the North St. Louis Arts Council and we have a proposal from the Missouri Arts Council of which we have monies to pay stipends to 20 youth to be involved in a photography program. So that's where I solicited the aid of uh, Lois Ingram with eight, um, 85A Studio. So we, we were able through this grant to pay Lois to do the virtual tour for Pulley's class for his freshmen, sophomores, and seniors. Then we were able to pay the students Pay that one student that showed up to go to Lois' studio and meet Lois and sign up for the program and get paid for showing up. So we have the capacity to pay the students a stipend 
as well as the artist for working with the student. Now, this is for Dana, who's asking, what is it that we can do? Uh -huh. We are looking for artists to allow students to shadow them and maybe spend some time with them after shadowing them, teaching them exactly what it is they do. Now, Kiaris does not know this, but my boss and I have already talked about hiring Kiaris to do the same thing. Because I met Kiaris in Mr. Pulley's class last year, and I was really sold on her. So I brought her attention, to attention of my director, and she said, well, we need to hire her. So we did hire another student that I also met in Pulley's class last year named Tamanisha McIntosh. And Bobby, too, we put her at Tandy Recreational Center during the year of 2019 to teach photography and we paid her. But unfortunately, we lost her to a school district out in St. Charles. So we have the capacity to actually pay money for these kids to be able to be exposed to a media person. So, and um, as Bobby Tu was saying, with the um, advent of the Zoom, kind of an advantage to us because now as I notice all the people that are out of town, we can actually use you to teach a class through Zoom and pay you as the artist for doing that. So uh, with that having been said, uh, we're in the process right now of rewriting that same grant to Missouri Arts Council. And now having met all of you guys and talked to you, Bobby, too, about this new advisory committee, we'd like to be able to include that in this new proposal and find out how do we uh, get monies to pay you guys. So that having been said, uh, let me chime out. And I, and I hope that answered the, the question a little bit and um, just know that eventually um, Murphy and Pooley and a lot of you will retire and we don't want things to stop because you all are retired. We want to continue and keep growing and keep progressing. And we need people to come in and fill those positions. And go ahead, Murphy. I was just going to say, I, I want to hear from some folks. I'm going to mess with uh, Thomasina first. And uh, <laughs> Thomasina is an artist. However, Thomasina and Hot Safi. Uh, who's who's an awesome producer? They work together and they've done videos and and so forth. And um, Hatsevi's been in my classes and and spoken to young people and inspired them. So you know, I, I, I want to hear from them. Go ahead, Thomasina. What do you think about what we're talking about? I'm I'm happy. First of all, I'm happy to be a, uh, selected to be a part of this. Number one. Um, what you guys are proposing to do is passing the torch and I'm liking that. Um, uh, key, what you just said was you don't want it to stop. And that's usually what happens. Uh, people get out of stuff and then it doesn't get handed down. Um, and I'm looking forward to, I don't know what capacity I can do anything with or in but I'm in. Anytime anything can 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 happen, anytime something can move, anytime I can be a part of something that can can go in a continue going in the, in the direction that it's going, I'm ready to jump in. So, whatever you need me to do, I'm here. All right. What about you, Hot Sefi? <laughs> in the past, I've come in and talked to the students in the classroom in reference to. Uh, pre-production or what it is that I do. Uh, what you and I discuss a lot would in the past has been like this developing the story, uh, mm -hmm. pre-production stuff, you know. Uh, I, I deal a lot with the film aesthetics because I come from a technical background and I've done for, you know, from tech being a technician to being to producing and programming and things like that. So uh, key now that I'm re officially retired from a job and can devote more on my career time, 
uh, I'm, you know, moving more into writing. However, I enjoy working with the students uh, in the past. Just, I know uh, in reference to what Dana was asking, there are times when we can do things in the classroom. And then there are times when you may be able to provide that internship for the students to come on location and work with you. And it's now the key say that there are certain uh, organizations that can provide some some fees for the for the for the kids. So now that they're getting the stipend while they're learning, and then they're also shadowing you, and then you're also being able to give them, you know, your expertise. And so they're still learning and growing. I know at the uh, history, I mean, at the Blues Museum, uh, I, when you all were doing the three three camera shoots, and I was able to go there and talk about framing. I mean, because they they were working the equipment and they were doing the switching. However, it was like, but what are you trying to say in the shot? You know, so I, I, I enjoy working with them on that. So after about three times, I didn't have to come back because I, you know, they started picking up what I was saying. Okay, you got your two shots, your one shot, this over the shoulder shot. Why, you know, can't, you know, how can we bring more, make this more interesting? Can we see their hands? What, what are you doing? So just, that is an extension of, you know, that extra director's eye that they may not be getting because they're just, not just, because they're engineers. So they're taking things, they're taking things without necessarily putting that other extra element to it. So for me, I, I enjoy, I enjoy pre-production a lot because technology changes a lot, you know, but to you and I go back to Final Cut on VHS. <laughs> so, you know, and I tell people this all the time that the technology may may change, which is the reason why a lot of times I just never bought a lot of different cameras because I'm just gonna stay whatever was the state of the art. I'm gonna go whatever state of the art with that person who has it or how I can acquire it for that time. But the production elements and the film aesthetics that goes into motion picture, be it TV, be it film, or be it whatever, those elements remain the same, production elements. And that's where that's where I come in. And I want to continue to be able to do that. Um, I want to pull rank and uh, ask Jay Gill to just give a little reflection on what he thinks we up to and, um, you know, what direction we, we may need to go. <laughs> OK. Hey, hello, everybody. Everybody, uh, for me, for y'all that don't know me, my name is Jay Gill. I'm the um, uh, director, of VP of Engineering for uh, KTVI and KPL, uh, KPLR here uh, in St. Louis. Um, uh, we have uh, Quinsana that actually works with us. Um, that we got uh, working with with uh, Mr. Murphy, and, and he's doing well. Um, from an engineering uh, perspective. Uh, we, you know, I'm always interested in, in folks that can perform in audio, video, TD, editing, uh, live trucks, uh, ENG, SNG, um, maintenance, and even IT. So uh, for your students, you know, just to make sure that we uh, communicate to them to have those particular uh, talents, um, it's, 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 it's definitely needed in the field. Also, understanding the new ATSC 3.0 that's happening with the, the broadcast and, the, and uh, with the 5G and how that's going to marry together, uh, virtual production, uh, knowing what's out there for the latest equipment uh, to purchase, um, whether it's black magic, uh, like the young lady said, keeping up with the engineering and the, and the technology is important. Um, for me, <clears throat> I'm always looking to, to help. Um, but making sure that we, we equip um, our students with the knowledge and the ability and the confidence to be able to perform uh, out here in the real world. And so um, always looking to uh, give an opportunity so it doesn't go somewhere else, if you know what I mean. So um, that's, that's my role, uh, what I do at my job on a daily. Uh, um, like I said, we got Quinsana there. He can probably explain some of the things that he goes through uh, at the station, um, but just to make sure that we communicate and keep the students, um, uh, just like the young lady said, technology does change, but the basics are the same. 
um, but also being a, being aware of new technology and making sure that you can take advantage of that is one of the things that we need to make sure that we always educate um, because when it comes to being able to perform in the ring uh, at high quick deadlines, high pressure situations, um, that's that's uh, what they need to be able to do. And if I can do anything to uh, help and teach that or participate in, um, like you said, the, the internships, uh, uh, we're a union shop, but I will be discussing um, based on this call, I uh, wrote down some notes on internships where we can get uh, some of the students in the building to do some hands-on or some shadowing the way you all have done already. That's my two cents and right. any other discussion. Thank you. Well, well, now I want to pick on Glenn Woke since we spoke to equipment. Um, go ahead and introduce yourself right quick, Glenn, and uh, let us know... Uh, how you see all of this? But Charles, uh, thank you so much for. Uh, uh, can you hear me first of all? Yes, sir. Okay, good. Thank you so much for inviting me and participating on this panel. Uh, happy Happy New Year! Happy twenty twenty one to everyone. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, I am uh, very uh, blessed. Uh, in, in our business, we have been uh, able to position ourselves uh, as the go to company uh, for. IP uh, services and IP uh, installation, IP training. Uh, I, I do know several people on the panel. Hot Sefi, I, I don't know if you remember me. I met you through uh, MCA, Media Communications Association, a couple years ago. Uh, it's, it's interesting how everyone uh, has a circle of influence. Uh, you know, I've got over a thousand connections on LinkedIn. Uh, and basically, we've been blessed uh, to be able to meet a lot of folks face to face. Uh, this is my 34th year in business, and we've been able to support uh, all different types of organizations. And uh, we're we're a referral based, word of mouth type business. Uh, so, uh, I I agree with what Hasefi said a little bit earlier is that you need to frame the shot. You need to. Uh, uh, have the students have a have a thought process when they go out and capture content, uh, so that they can uh, deliver those consumables to their customers. Uh, as far as uh, uh, specific uh, applications of the types of products. Uh, we dealt with a lot of different uh, customers, uh, universities, schools, educational customers, uh, the military, houses of worship, uh, production companies, uh, TV stations, cable access studios. I cover a 500 mile radius around St. Louis. And we're in over a dozen markets. And uh, I actually had asked uh, Charles to uh, 2018, excuse me, 2019, he appeared on a panel for, for my uh, listing of my customers who have been using and deploying technology. And I, you know, I, I mentioned this at my, when he was on my panel that he is a saint. He is a uh, great mentor to his students. Um, he's, he's a circle of influence. And uh, I'm, I, I am here to help him to be to become a success because he's mentoring these students. They'll go off to uh, their next uh, level of education at, at uh, Mizzou or SEMO or Webster University or Lindenwood University. These are all customers of mine. Uh, so, you know, when they, when they go into the university level, then they're gonna actually gonna be going out to the uh, real world level as well. So, you know, for instance, so, uh, we, we uh, are a new tech dealer. We just got recertified. I just went through uh, $5,000 of online courses uh, to be the certified new tech TriCaster dealer for the, for the Midwest. Cool. And these, these kids are gonna come through his, his classes um, and learn specific things that the TriCaster can do. Uh, and then they're going to take it out to the to the next university level, or possibly go out to uh, you know work at Boeing, to work at uh, uh, Bayer, to work at 
uh, educational customers, hospital customers. You know, uh, I've got a customer who has a TriCaster down at BJC in their studio down there. So, you know, I'm, I'm all about helping uh, these people persist and have a purpose and go on to their, their next level uh, because that's what it's all about. If they can uh, succeed, if you can, all can succeed, then we've done our job properly. But, uh, yeah, if anything that I can do to help any of you folks, uh, you, you can always uh, give Charles a call or you can connect with me on LinkedIn that, that's, or go to my website, glenwolk.com. Okay, right on. I'm just bouncing around. Um, and well, I don't want to take. I want to. I don't want to take up any a, a lot That's of right. everyone's time. Um, but I do want to get some things set up before we kind of end this meeting. Um, just know this is just the first of many, and that uh, everyone will get a chance to just go around and talk and speak about things that they have to bring to the table. Like we all have different avenues. Um, so I will like to um, kind of get some roles down. And then with that, I will send out an email that has everyone's like first and last name. If you got in the chat, I, I sent you, look in the chat. I just need you to send me your first and last name, your phone number and the best email that I can contact you with. I am gonna send that to everyone. So if you don't want everyone to have your email and just your name, just put that on there. Just it's fine. Um, but what everything that we just said, uh, we, we're just scratching the surface with what we have planned for the future. Um, but if you are feeling led to be a part of the actual committee, that is the vice president, the secretary and the treasurer, we will like to get those uh, roles down today. And and then I can break down like what that entails with us moving forward. Um, so any uh, volunteers, if not, if you would like more information, stuff like that, I don't mind sending out more details. Um, I would like to get it down now because we are here now and seeing how comfortable you feel and things like that. Um, but if you prefer, like, I need more details before I can commit to something, I understand that. And I will send that out within the next, uh, before the end of the day, actually. I would say, um, um, traditionally, in the um, advisory committee, we haven't had to get that level of organization. But that doesn't mean we can't, you know, because that just means we can get more done. Um, so... I do want us. I do want um, uh, Tim and Marlon to share. I um, haven't heard from them yet because um, I think they really have something uh, uh, really positive that 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 we all need to know about. Now I know we might be on a forty-five minute limit, <laughs> um, uh, although generally in the pandemic they let it slide. But anyway, if 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 necessary, we'll we'll stop and then restart to get another forty five minutes. But we don't want to just drag it out. I mean, right. is that making sense to people? Yep. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Question right. though. Yeah. So I mean, how often will the advisory board be meeting? Because I don't really know what the framework. It is for us. I mean, I've been, you know, talking to you and working with you for the past couple of years now. Uh, and this is the, my first opportunity to get to interact with these many people. And, and moving forward with today being, you know, Jay first uh -huh. in 2021, I, I, I would really like to see some framework. Okay. And so I just in even knowing what our frequency is, how we're projecting and not to get away from hearing from the other folks that you want to hear. But I, I do want to make sure that we try to think about that before we get off this meeting. Okay. Because I, I think, think that, will help, that will help people try to figure out, okay, well, do I want to be a, you know, how can I make my time frame, uh, my, my time exist within holding an office? You know what I mean? So, okay. I think collectively, like as a whole group, we will probably meet 
via Zoom, if that's better for everyone, once a month. Um, as far as like committee members, probably one time outside of that once a month. So two times a month, including that one time as a whole collective. Yeah, because I, I think the CTE requirement is that you only have to meet twice in a school year. If I'm, you know, Bob or two can correct me on that. Yeah, that's right. That but I, yeah. I think it's only twice in, a, in an entire year. Uh, is the for us to be in compliance, we're scheduled to have two meetings during the course of 10 months. So it, it, it really, uh, to, to answer that, that, that requirement, I think that's it. But, but I know uh, Kiaris is, is talking about certainly us being able to meet more often uh, as schedules allow. But I think for us to be in compliance, I, I believe it's twice in, it a, in, a, in a calendar year. Yes, mm -hmm. that's correct. I, I, as far as I'm concerned, uh, once a month is fine with me. I think that there's uh, some huge opportunities uh, as a collective that we can help folks in this industry. Okay, good stuff, good stuff. Well, it looks like our time is, is cool, <laughs> so we're still good. So uh, if y'all don't mind, um, I'd like to hear from folks we haven't heard from uh officially yet so let's see who can uh any volunteers between michael tim, tim. marlon look tim i volunteered tim as tribute <laughs> okay what's <laughs> hi folks um so first on the part about putting a board together are there um are there bylaws already set on how you put officers together um i know you said that there's you've got to meet twice this calendar year uh, but typically with an organization where you've got president, vice president, and treasurer, there's a set of bylaws on how those people are chosen and what their specific tasks are, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but that's that's something you can address later. Yeah. I, so yeah. probably what Bob T is asking for me right now, um, the people that don't know me, I've been in two parallel careers my whole life. I've been a musician since I was 10 years old, started touring at 16. Uh, been an audio technician since I was 17, toured the world playing music and as an audio guy. Um, I think what I bring to the table is I've always been a boots on the ground guy. Um, I'm the guy that always goes to either, as a touring person, I go to the venue, sort it out. Uh, you make all your production calls and then you walk in the door and see what reality looks like. And then you sort out how to make the best production you can do with the tools you have available. Um, I just kind of summarize some things. I taught audio at Washington University for the theater department for uh, 15, 16 years until they canceled the program. Um, I've been associated with the Sheldon Concert Hall since 92 and I've been on staff there since 2011. So what I can bring to the table is just, like I say, boots on the ground experience, uh, I ran a television truck for five years. Uh, so, you know, the whole gambit of different equipment and how you deal with real life situations. Um, what I can bring to the table with the Sheldon Concert Hall is uh, my boss has allowed us to do internships, uh, audio and video, et cetera, uh, pretty much at will whenever we've got an opening. Um, until COVID hit, we average four or five school shows a year or so or a week rather so typically we would bring in 400 students for a live concert and then you know people could shadow me generally I ran the whole thing myself but people could shadow me and Bob too and and key on the video stuff um, then Tuesday nights we do local bands and that's another opportunity for people to come in and do the setup do the shadowing um, since COVID hit, we're still doing the school shows virtually, and we're still doing the local bands on Tuesday nights virtually. So on those situations, it's just the performers on stage and just the technicians at front of house. Everything is very safe. Um, so far, just this calendar year, with the education shows, 65,000 students have seen these shows already. 
So, you know, that's, in a nutshell, that's what I've got to throw into the bucket. I've got a lot of experience and I've got uh, access to one of the top venues in the world um, and with full support of our board of directors and my boss. So that's kind of where that's it. Put me where you think you can use me the best. Um, that's kind of what I've got. Um, also, I forgot, I'm also on the board of directors of the Blue Society. So, and I was on the advisory board for Nelly's Extreme Institute for the, he knows me pretty well. Bob too knows me real well. Uh, just put me where you think it fits is all I got to say. <laughs> Marlon. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What's up, man? What's up? <laughs> man, what is going on? So no, I'm, I'm loving this, man. I'm loving uh, all the ideas. Uh, to give you guys a little bit, uh, a little bit of background, I'll try to be brief as possible. Um, I, I, I do marketing by, uh, I guess, trader experience. I have a marketing company called uh, Hog Time. Uh, I've been managing Murphy Lee uh, from the group St. Lunatics for the last maybe 12 years or so. Um, but the, the bigger picture is that uh, I have a, a foundation called the Whitfield Foundation for Success um, that's focused around them. We have a, uh, a 8,000 square foot facility right here on the south side. Uh, if you guys are familiar with uh, Nextcore, um, we actually have that building. It's the old Nextcore building that used to be a co-working space. Um, so we do, uh, all of our programs are, are, are centered around STEM. So we have a uh, coding program for kids. Uh, we partner with Shay Gillespie, who works for Worldwide Technology. She has a um, coding class called Color Coded Kids. That, uh, so we use her curriculum and partner with her. We also have a robotics uh, camp that we've partnered or use uh, Lego's curriculum. So we uh, have a robotics camp here. Also, we have a film camp. So uh, it's called On The Set Summer Film Camp. A uh, partner of mine has been doing it in uh, Birmingham for 13 years. I brought it and partnered with him, brought it to St. Louis. So me and Dana Christian worked on that together. Um, it's a unique camp because we bring kids in uh, we shoot we teach them all the aspects of filmmaking and they do the production. So we teach them about acting, directing, cinematography. Um, and they're actually behind the camera doing everything, working sound. We uh, get a script in here. We actually shoot a short film. Uh, and the unique thing about it is we bring in a Hollywood actor every year to actually act in the movie and be a mentor to the kids. Uh, last year we had Cole from Martin, which uh, if you guys also know, he was... Um, his real name is Carl Payne, but he's Cole from Martin or Cockroach from the Cosby Show. Uh, but every year we bring in a Hollywood actor. Uh, we shoot a short movie, and at the end of the year we do a, a red carpet uh, event, or, or a movie premiere, where we actually show the movie, and then we also um, give out awards like Best Actor, Best Actress, and allow the kids to do their speeches. But uh, in this facility, again, we, we do those uh, here. We also have two virtual reality experience rooms. So we have uh, two Oculus um, uh, headsets and we have a big like both 65 inch screens and so whatever you see on your oculus we show on the screen we teach kids about that technology we also have a full recording studio here uh so the goal again is 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 for from my standpoint is to help kids learn more about the emerging technologies not only being consumers of these technologies but creators of it um and again everything that you guys are offering offering is amazing it, it actually uh the things that two words that came to mind with just listening to you guys is uh inspiration and empowering uh and, and that's the key and that's really one of the, our, our missions here to inspire and also empower um but in the arts and everything it, get, it goes back to like Tupac saying that uh and, and I'm going to get this quote on our wall uh he says uh and I'm paraphrasing to a certain degree that uh he may he won't be the person that uh changes the world but he guarantees to spark the brain that will change the world um and that's what we're doing here um because a long time ago I learned that that uh, everything you guys are talking about is sexy, is romantic, uh, romantic, but uh, romance without finance just don't <laughs> work. So being able to pay these kids to do this on top, <laughs> <laughs> top of this thing looking good, it's amazing. So that that's my little spiel. Uh, I fast. <laughs> Y'all hear me? Yeah, we hear you. Uh, yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh. For me, it's uh, the most important thing is really about the exposure, the exposure to the kids, the exposure to industry, the exposure and access. 
Uh, that is what's going to change the mindset. I think that's where a lot of my focus is as far as this, the kind of things that we're talking about is being able to bring the exposure and all the different avenues and aspects to the production field. I look at it as a holistic thing as far as production. And there are a lot of places in production that the kids don't even know exist, uh, that there are jobs or ways to uh, make money inside of this. Everybody's not going to be an actor. Everybody's not going to be a producer. Everybody's not technical, uh, you know, and all the way down to hair and makeup. People who have kids who have interest in food, but uh, love the production world, you know, there's a place for them, being able to expose them to that and give them access to people who's actually out here doing it. Uh, one of the programs that uh, I'm helping create with continuity and Kosanta is helping on this as well, is a bridge program through continuity where we plan to take uh, the kids from the high school and connect them with the production companies and places around town that actually are doing things so they can get in and get the hands-on experience. We're still in the uh, phase of kind of really getting that set up and getting everything in place so we can start going having conversations with these uh, companies and things of this nature. So uh, Mr. Jay Gill, uh, I will be showing up at your office at some point. Uh, you know, so we want to be able to just create that space for the kids to go to the companies. Continuity right now functions for adults that are trying to transition over into the uh, production world and learn those things. It's a 30, 36 week course at the beginning to be able to get in, but we wanna create that bridge for the children to be able to get that exposure. Cause if they can learn that early, that's what changes everything. Most of our kids, the issue is they haven't been off the block and we have to get them off the block so they can start seeing what is possible so they can start seeing outside of all the people that they know and just follow that path but sometimes you don't have what you need necessarily at home or next door. but if you break that break that mindset where they can look outside of that it changes everything and my philosophy is kind of uh, be the person you need it when you were younger. And my whole goal is to try to be that guy that I wish that I had back when I was starting out and trying to figure out how to make things happen and not have any access uh, to those things. Uh, I know a couple of people programs you have with kids. One of the other things that I've been talking to uh, Kevin and Charles about is a partnership with uh, some Hollywood industry people that are, you know, black in film, doing different things, TV writers, uh, hair and makeup and everything. And they put together a, basically a virtual panel because they're all sitting around in quarantine now. And they're looking, something is happening all over the country. And I want to put together a group here where I can bring these people virtually in for the students. So anybody that has students, a group of students that would, well, you, want, you would want to participate in this, I wanna set a date. They would like to do something as early as uh, well, January now. They wanna do something as early as this month. And if I can get, we can get up to like things of that nature. So if we can get a hundred kids, we can put them directly in contact with uh, people who are things of that nature to be able to ask questions, hear the different aspects of things, to learn what they need to be doing to get ready and set up what path they should be going on. Should you be going to college for this? Should you go to a trade school? There's all different kind of paths to this world. Uh, and a lot of it is just going miss because we're looking at it from you know a one point of view one more thing i say before i shut up is that also the kids need to be exposed to that this is you know majority of people that make a living in this field 
is not working a job. You know, you have to know how to create your space, how to find, how to, uh, you know, make a living and things of that nature. You know, most of the stuff that happens in production, you are free in that frame. You have to know how to navigate that and know if that's something that you want to do. So then you can know what kind of position you want to pick. You want to be stable and you go and work for a production company, work a nine five, work in uh, news. Do you want to work in film? Do you want to try to figure out how to have ownership in this space, which I think is the most key thing and the last thing that we ever really talk about. But uh, I want just want to create opportunities to expose the kids to as much of that as possible so they can have a better chance of finding their place in this world. What do you think, man? <laughs> uh. I think it's dope. I definitely think uh, I'm interested. I'm definitely in the mindset that I'm a plug in guy. So you tell me where you need me. I can pretty much pop up. Um, I would say that I come in, you know, my role is probably more of an example. Just like he was talking about, she was able to get a, a go to college on a full ride with uh, the skills that she was able to attain in high school. I went a different route. I didn't go to college to do any videography at all, um, but I built connections with uh, just the people that were able to give opportunities. I didn't even get into the television class at my high school when I tried to. Um, I was put directly in construction. <laughs> so I followed uh, and, you know, an after school program popped up doing something with documentary work. I kind of jumped on that um, and I stayed in touch. Um, my skills are more, I'm an independent videographer, filmmaker. I usually work on uh, short highlight events, wedding projects, um, short films, documentaries, things like that. So I'm really in tune with uh, just the technical things of like production cameras, DSLR, cinema uh, cameras and things like that. Um, but, uh, you know, what you just said, Michael, that kind of, I got to keep that in mind, be the person that you needed when you were younger. I got to, I got to keep that because that definitely gives me a path of, you know, giving me the right mindset. But um, yeah, man, I'm just here to, to share my experience. Um, I'm definitely here to help students if I can come on set or if I can come out and just help let them uh, know anything that I know when it comes to just technical things or being able to shoot, edit, uh, do anything in that manner, then that's where I like to fit in. Again, you know, I have the opportunity now to work in television, which is another field, but I also built, you know, these small skills in audio production and video production and things cross over really well. So it's easier to, to um, you know, just touch those fields when you have uh, experience on some of these things. But I will say that uh, the main thing that I see is like, I didn't have any support or any vision on what I could do with a camera in videography at all. It was just, hey, these Hollywood things is how you get in. So find some production studio or anything like that, which I, I wasn't able to find. <laughs> so uh, being able to build these connections and end up finding opportunities and figuring out that there's a lot more positions that you can do um, in the field instead of just being the, the, you know, the million dollar cinematographer or whatever you want to call it. <laughs> call it and being able to create local things that uh I don't know just to tell stories um locally and and I don't know so that my place is just to to fill in and help as much as I can um and I want to be the person that I need it <laughs> Got it, boss lady. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> May I make a suggestion? Yes. Um, sorry. First of all, Key Productions, what is your name? I'm sorry. Uh, my real name is Kiaris, but I go by Key, like K-E-Y, like a car key. key. Okay, well, that's a, that's a good uh, name for your company then, too. That's that Everybody uh, can remember that. High school. Thought it up in high school. Oh, wow. That's okay. cool. Uh, Key, would you be so kind and uh, possibly create a list of each person along with their phone number? I went ahead and put mine over here in the chat section, my phone number and email. Um, and then maybe think about... Uh, Let's see, here's uh, January 1st, maybe the first week in February. Is that what you're all thinking for the next meeting? Yes, we can do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll be emailing everyone today with a list of contact, our next meeting, and then uh, the roles, and then also a few uh, things that Murphy showed you on the document. Fantastic. Okay. Um, Maybe we can hear from Lois, Lois Ingram. If we can hear from Lois, I don't, I don't see to get a chance to uh, speak yet and tell about her uh, studio and all the great work she's doing. Yeah. Hello, Happy New Year's, everybody. Um, <laughs> I want to personally invite everyone out to the studio. I did put that in the chat. Michael, I have a new studio that has 4,000 square feet and it has at least five shooting stations. So uh, I know you know, I worked with uh, some of the young people down on Washington. We still have some of those young people, but um, we've increased the students to about, I, cause I work with the NAACP students and it's about 63 students. So I have the students coming in and out. We only allow uh, 10 people at this time in the space at any given time. Uh, we do have internship <laughs> programs that we're um, uh, gearing up for. We also have Zoom classes that are online. Um, I do wish everyone uh, go onto the website to just see the space and see some of the things that we offer. And I'm gonna leave it at that. <laughs> so, cause we've been talking, I'm, I've been in the business for 30 plus years. I worked for CBS for about seven years in Little Rock as an engineer, my first, degree was in engineering. Uh, but since then I've had I've two masters and two bachelor's degrees now. But uh, business is my main forte. And I want to be that person that trains a young person to take over my company. Mm -hmm. um, I don't want to close the company when I leave. I want to be able to say it can still go on for generations to generations. So that's why I'm constantly working with young people to um, give them the, you know, the ownership, to allow them to be able to say, um, this is a safe space for me and I am able to train and understand what is necessary for me to be successful in business. I, know. <laughs> I think that's it. <laughs> hey, Lois. Hey, how, is that, how, is, yeah. how you doing? I'm good. <laughs> good. Uh, it's always good seeing you. Uh, if you can recognize him. Yes, I <laughs> think. I think that's uh, Diane, Diane, Diane. Am I saying it right? Diana, Diane, Murphy. You talking about Dana? Yeah, Dana. there it is. Dana. Uh, Dan yeah. <laughs> um, I don't think that we got a little, if you want to just give a little spiel about you a little bit, um, I don't yeah. think we got that yet. I Man, I'm really nobody for real. Um, uh -huh. but, uh, but very humble, uh, very humble. <laughs> but, uh, but first of all, I want to just say, like, because uh, a lot of these spaces I know, uh, some of them I don't know, and I'm glad that I actually able to uh, see you all virtually. Uh, and then overall, I mean, this is it's just funny how you put things out in the atmosphere and how they kind of just come full circle because these are conversations I have with individually with like me and Michael, me and Marlon, and then me, uh, Michael, Papa too, and uh, Kevin, we, we got on the call before saying how we want to move these things forward. And it's just funny how like seeing this come to fruition and just uh, in this own little way, which is cool. So I know... Uh, we putting energy into the right path and this definitely is going to happen and really, really be successful. But um, 
but long story short, I've been in uh, video production since 1996 uh, when I was at uh, Webster University after I changed my major. was volunteering at a local TV station here that produced some great talents. It was called DHTV Double Helix at the time. Um, and while I was there, I was volunteering and also running a music video show, which was a hip hop music video show. Out of that show, I made a connection with the St. Lunatics um, and eventually started working with them. And then that sprung board me to actually start working with Chingy, Jaquan, uh, pretty much anybody who was uh, a major artist at the time. I was the casting director and shooting behind the scenes with them, which also led me to start working with the record labels uh, directly then started directing music videos and just started doing more production, storytelling, and also reality TV show development. And I'm kind of still doing all this stuff collectively now. But um, but yeah, but definitely, like I said, I, have, uh, I think uh, for us, like some of those connections, I think that's really one of my, uh, my really, really strong points is really connecting people and also helping to... Uh, structure things because i i see we have a lot of bodies here and a lot of people that's doing a lot of different things and i know people are definitely interested and want to get involved but trying to figure out how can it make sense not only with what they have to offer but also their time and by me sitting back listening i think i kind of can help structure that in a way so it makes sense for everybody because i know like how it is with me being a working professional and independent Sometimes you got to get to work when it comes, especially during this pandemic. But I still want to give back to where it makes sense because it's definitely needed to uh, expose our youth, as Michael was mentioned, to, uh, to these opportunities that they may not always see and know what's out there. But at the same time, making sure we have a strong community of independent um, uh, people who, who just don't always come from these uh, or, or have these things just given to them uh, in, in the production world and making sure they are just ready and it's a seamless transition. So I think that's just some of the, um, oh, sorry about that. And I wasn't drinking. <laughs> uh, and I think that's kind of like one of the strong points that I really have. And as long as we're like this for like skill sets as far as I also uh, for us directing and producing, and also shoot and edit as well. So um yeah so i'm i'm pretty much in where i can really make a difference but uh i think that's kind of like where i kind of see myself within this whole round awesome thank everybody oh sorry yeah. um, have we been through everybody yet key uh, it looks like it from this list uh, reason why I'm saying that is because I, I can do mine real quick, but I know when I first, when, when Baba 2 asked me to weigh in, I basically just kind of said what I, uh, how I, I had worked with him in the past. Um, but as far as who I am and what I am, and I can, you know, make it really fast. Um, but I didn't, I'm, I'm not used to promoting myself. I'm used to promoting other people. So I am Hasefi Kushma. Um, HK Films, LLC. I, I do teach at Webster and St. Louis University. I teach a film studies class. However, as far as background is concerned, um, like with DHTV that uh, Dana was talking about, which was Double Helix, which was the only video production house in St. Louis that was a union shop. And so um, I started off as program coordinator in became producer and then executive producer. So for a while, what I found my role there was to help people. I would, I would get, so I'm just gonna be honest. I would get black folks in, in production so that they could get a union card. So that they could go and work at television stations. Um, but everybody doesn't wanna work in a television station. However, you can't work there if you don't have a union card. So that was my job there. I also uh, had Nebula Communications, which was the only black production company in uh, communications company in St. Louis that was hosting film festivals. And so we were bringing in artists every year. We would have a theme for our film festival and we would bring in a filmmaker. And this was long before ABFF, uh, the Black Film Festival that they do in Miami, we were doing it here and they would come and address people. I've been in the industry like 40 something years. 
<coughs> excuse me. So I started in TV and I moved over to film in 2000. Uh, I'm still in the industry. Uh, I really, really, I'm really liking what uh, Jay and Michael, well, well, really actually what everybody's doing. I'm extremely, extremely excited about all of this. I've worked with Dana and mostly, uh, mostly a lot of people that, that are here on the panel. Um, <coughs> And, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, and, you know, I've worked on video productions and Nelly videos and stuff like that. And that's where I met Dana. And currently I'm still working in the industry. And the last production I worked on is uh, Lovecraft Country. Before that was Batwoman. So I'm, I've been working out of Chicago ever since they closed the film office here in St. Louis. So I do work in the costume wardrobe department and uh, so, Michael, you know, if, if you, you know, want somebody sometime to come out and talk to people, I, I think because of my background, I work more as a consultant now, while I'm also trying to uh, teach and work independently and have a life as well. I'm really, really, really excited about everybody on this panel. It's just because I can see, I can see myself and where I came from. And I can see myself where we're going with this. And it's just exciting to me. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, we have a lot of resources that can help each and every one of you. Uh, both in, uh, I'm a sole practitioner consultant, but you know, I've got a large circle of influence. So there's other folks in, in our industry that I can bring in to help uh, on any of your projects. So just to keep me in mind as an additional resource for everyone in this panel. Cool. Appreciate that. Definitely. Thank you, man. Thank you. Next. Thank you. And I'll also be sitting out, you know, the contact information and you guys just can just connect, you know, that's what that's what this is about. Um, Murphy, did you have any questions, comments, or concerns before we wrap everything up? Just a big old thank you to everybody. And I appreciate y'all staying on my case. <laughs> Cause I, you know, Dana, you know, me and Dana been doing different stuff off and on and Dana keeps coming back and, and <laughs> saying, Hey man, I need some people. I need some people, you know, we got something coming and I need some people. And so we gotta we gotta make those people. Yeah, I just wanted to show, throw a, a double helix shout out. I was the audio guy on the remote truck and in the studio for a lot of the shows from about eighty eight till ninety three or something. So yeah, when I was saying y'all need to roll a remote truck out. Yep. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Talk about the circle going around. <laughs> so so I just missed you by a couple of years. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I go back to Double Helix in the high school football game of the week. I sent you with Chad, uh, Chad Anna. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, we got a truck sitting out here. Y'all ain't making no money. We need to do high school football. High school. Right. We need to do football. Right. <laughs> I said that. And so y'all started doing it. I'm telling y'all, I'm, 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 I'm a little older than what I look. <laughs> <laughs> Hey. But yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like we, we was ahead of the game. Listen, we had instant replay back in 1988 for high school football. Okay, wow. that was that was pretty sharp. <laughs> yeah, since you guys mentioned instant replay, I I installed an instant replay system out at uh, Wichita Heights High School, and I I'm not, now I am certified myself as a trainer for instant replay systems for New Text Three Play. Oh man! Wow, man! Just, uh, yeah. And uh, as a remote, uh, uh, you mentioned remote trucks uh, were also set up as I, I took, uh, I used Charles as a, as a pilot project out at his football field uh, about a month ago. And we, we tested a new uh, mobile access point, completely wireless, that has a long range antenna option, will go up to 2000 feet. Uh, that and along, I'm, I'm installing a remote IP cellular bridge uplink for a customer ne next week so that he can do remote work for TV stations, live sports, just anywhere in St. Louis. Uh, uh, the cellular bridge allows you to, to connect 
uh, up to four JVC cameras simultaneously with the new, new connected cam series. Okay. Okay. So, again, I'm here as an additional resource for all you folks. If you know somebody, <laughs> please don't keep me a secret. We, hey, we would not. I know I won't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that camera's off the chain. Yeah. Man. Well, I just want to thank everyone for setting aside some time to just join this meeting. Again, um, I did get some of your information on the chat, but if you have not, please email me your contact information so that I can get it out to everybody. Greatly appreciate it. Cool. Murphy, good? Hey. All right, everyone have an amazing new year. You as well. Thank you, yes. everybody. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah, uh, thank you all. Thank you. Beautiful. Hey, Bob, hey, Bob, too. Bob. Yeah. Baba too, before we leave, you got to say your famous ending line, which I always love to hear you say. To be continued. Yeah, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Take care, everyone. Take care, man. Right. God bless. Happy